Okay, hi! Hello, hello. I'm Tani at this chat. You guys, I love the fact I went upstairs to go make a cup of tea. I think I was gone for maybe five minutes and I had to scroll back so much. It's great seeing y'all chatting. So, hello to all my usual muslings. Hello to those of you who are new and joining us. Uh, today's plan is, um, what is the plan today? I've got so much on my mind right now. My brain just went, nope. Uh, yes, we're going to be finishing up this lovely lady from Cripple God Foundry. She is from their Curse of Hollowed, Curse of Hollow Hills Kickstarter that they did a few months back and I actually featured here on the channel. They sent her along to me so I could see the amazing detail and I finally had a lovely little window to get her painted up, which is why I'm going to finish her today. There's just a few more things I want to do with her. So I finished after, so I figured after I finished her, when I got back from Mace, there was a lovely box on my art studio desk full of goodies. So, so we're going to go through this amazing <laughs> whiz kids basically sent me all of wave 10. So I thought might be fun to show you what they have sent along because uh, <laughs> I'm actually quite excited for a few of these miniatures that came my way. Um, so I'm going to work on finishing her up. There's really not that much left to do with her. I have obviously I'm calling them the shoulder pads. Um, there are these shoulder pad details that I want to get painted up. There's her belt. We have these little details right here on her sash. And then we have the gold coins and the headpiece on her uh, forehead that I want to take care of as well. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on just a couple of washes. Nothing crazy. How do I pronounce Lich? Ta -da! I used to have a problem with it because I wasn't quite sure because it's one of those words where you read it a lot and in your head you hear something different than what it actually is. Um, I do the same thing with Drizzt. I want to say Drizzt. <laughs> it's always fun. Uh, and Mike, don't worry about not being able to make it to Mace. You had things on your plate. Let's put it that way. And hello, Ravenwolf. Thank you for jumping in. Um, it's one of those things where I missed you guys and so much has happened. So it's one of those, uh, let's just get chatty and I'm going to get painting. And I am using plaid products today uh, to finish her up. Uh, I did put on the color shift paints and I had the joy of meeting um, Shauna from plaid and she and I just had the greatest time chatting at Mace and I'm going to be getting more goodies. So I'm very excited about that. Now, quick little disclaimer for those of you who are uh, in the know. This channel is not intended for children under the age of 13 without parental supervision. So kiddos, if you're under the age of 13, go get a parent and start watching together. Okay. <sighs> there's drama. There, that's hence the pearls. Pearl clutching time. Uh, there's drama with the FCC and YouTube and all this stuff. So for those of you seeing your content, create content creators, getting a little stressed out and seeing these settings about not for kids, for kids, Please just understand we're trying to get this figured out as well and we're all trying to protect ourselves and make sure we're taking the necessary measures so that we are compliant. So uh, officially now the channel has been marked as <laughs> not safe for children under the age of 13 because, you know, hot glue and knives, utility knives. I just rather play it safe, even though I know I have littles who do watch it. Trust me, kiddos. I love the fact that you watch this channel. Please just please make sure your parents know you're watching and you're watching together and uh, always have your parent with you when you're crafting. Ding. <laughs> All right. Ah, oh, hello, LJ. Nice of you to join us. And hello, Mega Moo. Hello to you. Uh, a plaid lich. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Uh, with the Scottish accent. Anyways, that's my little legalese to get us started. And like I said, it's one of those things that's like, oh my God, are you kidding me? But that's, that's what's the what happening right now. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. It's kind of a headache. So please, again, you're going to see us all trying and scrambling and doing what we can. You might have also seen the uh, advisory swat. Well, no, not swatch thumbnail that I had in the pre-stream. That is why. Uh, so I am first going to start with this amazing metallic, which I have used. I got a fresh bottle, so I'm opening it up. This one is a beautiful, beautiful blue. It is their metallic and it is their turquoise shimmer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this turquoise shimmer and I'm going to put it here on the sashes to kind of play off of the color shift that we have going on of that turquoise blue to the purple. Um, so let me see here. Uh, Viper, that is completely up to you. I'm talking physical age. If you are physically under the age of 13, please make sure you have a parent watching with you. Uh, 
the headaches. Uh, the the big joke is though now that I have this thing, I'm like, well, I can give the less filtered version of V, <laughs> which is closer to can't trail than people realize. <laughs> Uh, but again, it's good to see you all in there. And thank you for your support and understanding. I'm seeing some lovely comments already. So I'm going to jump right in here with her. And again, I'm taking this turquoise from the Folk Art, Metal Folk Art Metallic line. And I'm just going to get a little bit dabbed onto here. Because I thought that'd be a fun color to bring in. And yes, she is a colorful lady. We're not going to say painted lady because that's something else completely different. Uh, we do have to be crazy to live in this world, Johnny. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, Lich is a... Uh, Lich, would let you, there should be a T in there to make it a little bit more clear. Uh, Gory. Uh, hold on, let me... Did you just look well? There we go. So, yes, I am back from Mace. Mace was a lovely experience. We welcomed into the Guildmasters... Jim Kelly of the Tabletop Engineer. Thrilled about this. Wonderful gentleman. If you're not aware of him, he does have a YouTube channel. In fact, he's going to be going live at 1. So I'm kind of hoping to wrap it up a little bit after 1 probably is how this is all going to work out. And you can go and jump over and see what he's up to and say hello and that the muse sent you. Uh, if someone can get the link to his channel, that would be appreciated. I meant to do that beforehand, but I forgot. Uh, so that was sort of the biggest bit of news with Mace, is that Jim is now one of us. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely channel. Great ideas, especially if you like doing Gaslands and things like that. Go look. Um, yeah, see, Johnny, I was told it's Drist instead of Drizzt. So I, I don't know. I just don't know. Um, so that was the big happening. And then we had the crafting competitions, which were so much fun. I'm going to start painting her belt now. Um, I like that color a lot and I kind of want to put it elsewhere. Where else can I put this? Oh, I also have to paint her hair. That's why I got the black too. Mm, no, I think if I do too much of that color, it's going to be overwhelming. I just want to nod to it. Um, so let me see here. Uh, I will cite you NV as authority references. <laughs> oh dear God, I am the authority. Uh, so, tea time. Mm. Thank you, Gun. Literally, tea time. Um, not gossip time. That's not my style. Uh, so, <clears throat> we had fun with that. I actually had a great time for the uh, Guildmasters build challenge where um, we each got to build something. And there weren't that many guidelines. It was like, just build something with what was in the room. So we were all rushing around the room, grabbing everything in the room. And true to form, we all made something that fit our aesthetics. Like you could look at each piece and be like, that was built by so-and-so, that was built by so-and-so, um, and so on and so forth. So I built this really fun fountain just off the top of my head because I actually had a fountain dancing in my head for uh, Cobalt Press's Zobeck build. So for me, it was kind of one of those things where it was like, all right, cool. I get to sort of do a prototype of the idea I was thinking about. And I'm glad I did, because when I shared that picture on Twitter, holy moly, you people liked it today. That, or not today, but you liked it when it went up. And uh, I've actually made another fountain. It is still curing because I have used uh, florist resin, which I haven't touched in ages. Um, but once it's done curing and I get those last little details squared away, like uh, water motion and a few more bits of plants going on in it. Um, this is just basic chocolate bar brown from uh, Apple Barrel for her belt. So it was one of those things where it was it was the proof in the pudding. I'm like, okay, this is definitely how I want to approach doing this fountain and then some. So I've made a couple tweaks to it. Uh, you'll see how it's changed a little bit. And I'm super excited for its reveal once everything's ready for the Zobek Fountain. And along with that, I don't know if y'all saw the tweet I had go up and I actually posted on Facebook and Instagram too, of the, I made a while back the interchangeable signpost. However, I had it set up with hooks so you could use hooks to change it. Um, but I decided to, for sake of ease, I'm like, you know what, let me see if I can do some sort of magnet option which i did figure out I'm quite happy about that that sucker is still going strong on twitter like rest in peace my notifications so if you're trying to reach me on twitter i'm not getting back to you 
<laughs> that's why. <laughs> um, it's one of those things where, holy moly, throw magnets in and suddenly everyone's loving it. So the concept does exist already on the channel. Um, so please do go check it out. Really all you'll need to tweak is instead of putting in those eye hooks into the two different parts of the sign and the post itself, just get these little, um, I can never say the word right. I'm talking about, how do you pronounce? The niodinium, I think, I believe, magnets. And these are super, super, super small ones, uh, as you can see right here. So these are the ones that I'm using. I believe I have these linked up in my Amazon shop on my website too. Um, but I just basically use these instead, one on each end. So you put one post, you put one in the post side and one in the sign sign, and it clicks together. Um, super fun, super easy. That's what I did. For those of you wondering how I did it, like I said, the video is technically already out there. It's just, I switched the attachment option. Um, everything else is pretty true to it. So just a, just a heads up in that department. Okay, so that takes care of the belt. It takes care of those two little pieces. I'm now gonna move on to the shoulder bits. And for that, I thought it would be fun to use. Uh, bu, bu, bu. That's not the color I wanted. I grabbed the wrong one. One moment, please. Hey, no attention to the stuff behind the curtain, which is basically just all of my paints. So what I'm going to use is the antique copper, again, from Folk Art, and pop that up onto the shoulder areas. I thought that'd be a good color kind of to tie into the red and the green and pull those two together. So let me get that out on my palette, which is basically a paper plate because, you know, you'll go an expansive like that. Um, but yeah, the reason why the signs was re were resuscitated, the sign and post concept, uh, Wolfgang wanted me to have four taverns that exist in Zobeck. Those are all names of taverns in Zobeck. Um, and basically have it because there is going to be a generic tavern build that I'm doing for them. Uh, he wanted to be able to have it so the signs could be switched around. Cool thing is, is that if this is working out for them, I can easily make them more little signs so that they have more of the taverns that people could visit while they're playing. Um, I'm getting there. Things are getting close. I'm hoping to do a stream of all of the Zobeckian, I guess would be the word, uh, build pulled together. And you can all see what's been going on. But that's been keeping me busy. And it will be for the next three weeks. But <clears throat> I will be visiting the Cobalt Press booth every so often while I'm at PAX. I also have my workshops going, which I have been trying to share on the socials. I did have the little thumbnails going too. So there's going to be plenty of opportunities if you are at PAX to stop and say hello. And I will happily say hello back to you. I am going to have the Crafting Muse D6 with me. However... Those beauties are going a lot faster than they did with the first edition to the point where I am actually in the new year going to place an order for the third edition, which I can't believe I'll be doing. So there's going to be another round of uh, Crafting Muse D6. And again, my whole intent is to make sure each one has a slightly different look to it. So that way they kind of become like little collector items for people. So yeah, I got to start thinking about what color I want it to be. It's still going to be the logo. Uh, absolutely for the D6 from the six. And um, it's just one of those things where, yeah, you're, it's going to be first come, first serve for the D6 dice at PAX. Hopefully I'll have one if you meet me. Uh, but I can't guarantee that I'll have one for everyone because I'm starting to run low. I did pull my bunch out for my patrons. So patrons, heads up. If you are one of my Patreon patrons, Please be sure that your information is updated and that your shipping address is your current shipping address because I will be sending out to each of you a single Crafting Muse D6 second edition to all patrons who are current. All right, so this isn't patrons who've been with me for the whole year. It's patrons who've been with me up to the point I go to the post office and ship them out. Uh, so that's a little heads up for, for you all to make sure you get that information in there. Otherwise, I am going to be chasing after you, asking you for your preferred shipping address. And if I don't hear from you, you won't be getting your dice anytime soon because, you know, once the holidays kick in, I'm giving myself a little break and I won't be going back to the post office until, you know, the year 2020. <laughs> I don't know why I just did that voice. But that is the game plan for those dice. Um, and speaking of which, I'm telling you, it's been a crazy week just in general. So... This is something I have been wanting to do, and I finally, finally, finally had the chance to sit down and do it. 
I am offering on my website. Uh, basically, it's a direct patronage through PayPal. So you don't have to go through Ko-Fi, you don't have to go through Patreon. You can actually just opt in for a level of your choice, for an amount of your choice. It can be a one-time donation. It can be a recurring donation if you choose to go that way. Uh, so if you go to thecraftingmuse.com, you will see on that left-hand side, show your support and then a donate button. Uh, I know some people have been having issues with Patreon and payments and cards getting declined and it becomes a headache because some people even have to call their banks and whatnot, which every month is not a fun thing to have to do. So I'm trying to take some of the headache out for those who are getting frustrated and you can instead go through PayPal and PayPal allows you to use a credit card of your choice or your PayPal account or your Venmo. I think there might be a direct bank link. I don't know. Don't quote me on that last one, but there were definitely a couple more options. So it wasn't just a credit card uh, type of scenario. So that's something that's active and that is going. Should you wish to switch over by all means, I totally understand. I completely support if you want to go directly through PayPal instead of working through Patreon. It's just one of those things where, um, I don't know, I, I've been noticing there have been some clunky issues happening and I'm trying to make sure I have options available for everyone because trust me, I get it. There were a couple times I had to call in because my credit card was not processing properly and the people I support, I wanted to make sure they got the support. So I have been in that boat, my dears. Hence why I wanted to get this set up. And yeah, so there's that. There's also, I mean, there's still the super chat here on the YouTube channel. Uh, I still have the Ko-Fi going and all of that loveliness. Basically, I have a lot of different ways if you want to. Um, but my biggest concern lately was what was going on with Patreon and getting these notifications that, oh, someone's card was declined. And inevitably, that poor person, you have to reach out to them and just say, just so you know, I'm not trying to bug you for money. I'm more trying to let you know so you're not trying to use your credit card somewhere and you can't. So, what other media drama is there? <laughs> That's what it felt like today. A lot of uh, paperwork and cleaning up with various little avenues. But yes, I am definitely getting excited for PAX. I am totally lost in the world of Zobek. I am really working on trying to make sure all of these pieces have some sort of attention getting clincher for Cobalt. Because, you know, it's sort of my sort of my signature to give things color. I mean, hello. Hello. Commence the blingening. That's a new word. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mike. I'm glad you like my dice. Um yeah, it's just Chessex is great to work with. I got to reach out to them. Uh, I was hoping to get an order in early, but with two cons back to back, I kind of need to see where the bills are right now. It might be I have to wait until January simply for, um, cause a lot of times the, the way Patreon patrons help out is those are the, that's where some of the funds will go to. It helps me get like the fun little kickback things for followers and subscribers like the dice. Um, so there's that. And then I'm having the fun of, I just shared the parent and child workshop that I'm going to do September, not September, December 8th at PAX Unplugged. WizKids is sending me their wormlings from Wave 10. I actually have three of them, which I can show you today. And then um, it's basically set up where kids over the age of 10 can come in with an adult and they can paint up these lovely little wormlings that WizKids has sent along. And they're fun. They really are fun looking. So I thought that would be a really cool way to sort of get kids into it and appeal to them. Um, it's just one of those, it's something different. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love, love working with adults and love doing workshops for them. I'm doing two as well, terrain builds um, for adults at PAX, but I thought it'd be cool to not to, <laughs> isn't it ironic? Not a kid friendly channel, but I love to work with children. <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. And then I also have the panel that's happening Friday at 1.30. That's to prep or not to prep. That is the question as a DM. Uh, lovely personalities. Uh, we have uh, Goblin Kate, James Intracasso, myself, uh, Dr. Megan Connell, and a couple other people whose names I don't know if I can release yet. <laughs> but I think you'll enjoy them. So it's one of those fun little things. It's just uh, if you're at PAX, you're going to see me flitting around a lot. Bing, 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 bing. 
because honestly that's what I tend to do at conventions anyways. Okay, so that gets the copper on her shoulders, which I'm definitely liking the way that's pulled together with the green and the red. And now I'm going to get her headdress done. I don't want to make it the same color. I kind of want to do an offset color, so I am going to shift over to a gold. Oh, thank you, LJ. Uh, so I'm going to be using the brushed metal. This is another great, I love this brushed metal stuff. I'm doing the brushed antique gold. Sometimes golds get tricky with coverage, but this one I definitely like how it works. So I'm going to do that one. Uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. So anyways, since PAX is not too far around the corner, there there is going to be the shift again in my own schedule, personally, where you know I won't be host, not hosting, but DMing last day or that Sunday, because I'm not trying to DM from a convention. At least not stream DM. I, if I can do a pickup game, I would absolutely love to do a pickup game for people, maybe do a BB's Place round. Um, but it also means uh, that Wednesday before, there's no way I'm going to be streaming because I'm going to be making sure everything gets packed up and ready to drive down to Philly. So just heads up, there is going to be another, kind of like what happened this week, there's going to be some time taken off from the channel. Nothing against you guys. I adore our chats and our time together. It's just one of those things where there's only so much time every day. And that's precious time I need to make sure I have everything set and ready to go okay now you can see here if i pull it back into focus there are these tiny little coins right here dee, 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 all the way up um i'm going to switch to a different brush because i really want to make sure i have a nice fine tip on that one i'm also super excited because i got more of my favorite mod podge detail brushes from being nice nice hold on spin i have overloaded my brush thing so that's why it's not coming out nicely. That's not the one I wanted. Hold on. Uh, you can mix metallic paints with other colors. Uh, you will get sort of a pearlescent look if you're blending the two colors together. Heads up on that one. Uh, so just be careful that you're going after a certain look that you want. Like I wouldn't say, oh, you needed a purple and you wanted to lighten it up and you took a metallic purple because that's all you had because it's going to still have sort of a soft glow to it. I mean, you can. It just uh, sort of shifts its tone a little bit and its intensity of it being a metallic. Okay, so let's go in now and get golden. And yes, I'm concentrating so I get quiet. For those of you who have been with me for a while, you know I always do this. I go like, quiet, quiet, quiet. And contrary to what you would think, I do find it helps to have a nub of paint loaded up onto your brush for that. You know what? Let me move that. That's probably not helping things here. There we go. And if you're listening to the music, again, that is Techno Axe. I always try and do Techno Axe for the background music because I have gotten the all clear from them in writing that I can use their music as background music on my YouTube and Twitch channel. The Twitch channel is, honestly, that's more of a hosting other channels channel. But we'll see. I might go and start trying, maybe do something there. We shall see. I make no promises. Tis just an idea. And I'm also going to get the gold here on the belt buckle. <laughs> Let's see. Um, all right, Johnny, take care. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sort of an odd place to keep your coins, but I guess you know, quick, you know, quick little tip. You pull it off, and there you go. You're set and ready to go. Just a little touch of gold. Not a touch of gray, but a touch of gold. There we go. Let me... There we go. So she's slowly but surely coming together. Now I'm going to do the black on her hair. I don't know, I just kind of feel like black's going to be a good color for her hair. Um, and again, Jan, that's perfectly fine. I, I even appreciated that you reached out to me saying you wanted to change things up. So that was one of those, thank you very much. Um, you know, every, every little bit is appreciated. I know it seems silly, but even the people who do just $1 a month, that does add up. That really does help me out. You know, that's something where it's like, okay, I can go to a convention and I'm able to buy lunch. <laughs> silly things like that. Um, so don't ever feel like it's not enough or you can't do it because you can't do a higher amount 
Um, it's just... <laughs> uh, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, Jolene. It, I'm just glad I have a channel established on Twitch already. I didn't not get something going. You know what I mean? I'm just looking here. Yeah, sometimes this happens with the copper. It hiccups a little bit. And after it dries a little bit, you can see, like right there, I realized there's a spot that needed another little, little touch of paint there. Okay, so I'm going to move the black and get the black of her hair and then also just finish up the face with a little bit more black. And then that way, it'll be pulled together. Ta -da! And then I'll do the washes and then we can look through this really cool box. <laughs> it was, I actually was so tired when I got home Monday. I looked at the box. I didn't even open it up. I was, I was tired. I think I sat down on the couch and I slept for like an hour when I got back from the airport. Just because it was so, it was a busy weekend. It was good to see people. It was good to touch base with people. It was great to finally be together with all the other guild masters face to face in one room. I mean, we do chat often together, but we've never had the opportunity. Hold on. This brush just split on me. Um, but four feet away painting. Okay, that's totally okay. And hello, Michael Clark. And hello, War Mini Painting. Thank you, thank you, thank you for jumping in. I'm just switching back to that brush I was doing the gold coins with because the other one was doing that split sewed thing on me. All right, here we go. Going to get, going to get quiet because of the hair. It's one of those things that's like just on the edge. Lots of careful little strokes here, and yes, that looks like part of it right there, like a little curl of a lock. Let me just get this and I'll get back to chatting. Okay, so there's one side of the hair framing her out. I just have to get the other side and then we're going to do those washes. Um, but yeah, it was really, it was, it's funny how I've already had the chance to hang out with Scotty and Bill a few times. So wonderful seeing them. Got to meet wife Locke. She is absolutely lovely as well. That was fun. How am I going to get to this without... Hold on, she's got like hair right here, but I gotta get closer to her. Do I go out of frame or does the mini go out of frame? <laughs> the question of the day. Can you even see this? Can you see what I'm doing? But getting to see Jeremy and Gareth was fantastic. Hello, Brandon! It really was, um... And then we had the fun of making the big announcement that Jim is now with us. And Jim's reaction was, Jim had no clue. Just like I didn't last year. Um, so that was just precious to see his face go, Ooh. It really, we have video of it. So hopefully, I know a couple of guys are planning on doing videos. So keep an eye out for that with them. Those are coming out. Okay, I am going to call it on that with her hair. There we go. So now she's pretty much technically done except for the washes. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a couple of different ones. Um, for her face and the wrappings and everything, I'm going to jump into using the um, Seraphim Sepia just to kind of give it that yellowed, aged, old look to that area. And then I think what I might do for the rest is go more of an Agrax wash. Again, to sort of molder up the clothing a little bit. Because right now, she's like super vibrant. Like, she just went to the mall and she got her new outfit. Let's face it. She's not exactly a young spring chicken. She's not as young as she used to be. You know, she's showing her age a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that, Jolene. That's just it. The community has been so... So wonderfully supportive. I mean, really. I've been getting some lovely messages. I'm getting teared up thinking about it. But really appreciate you all wanting to take the time to help support us because we're all like, ah! 
Scramble! Ugh, and it sucks being in that mentality, too, because, you know, that's not good for anyone. We'll see what happens. We will get through this. I just, for me, it kind of, it's conflicting to mark this channel as not safe for children. But would I want my own kids using a hot glue gun and a utility knife unsupervised? No. <laughs> Hence why I was like, you know what, let's be responsible about it for now. Take it as it comes. <sighs> I agree, Jan. It's wonderful that we were able to surprise Jim with this after everything he's been through. He is one hell of a fighter, and we are lucky to have him with us. So, yeah. Go to his channel, subscribe. It'd be lovely. All right, so I'm going in with the Seraphim Sepia. It's the Citadel Wash. And I'm putting this onto the bandages right now and when you put the wash on you just want it to catch into all those little nooks and crannies and grooves and it's amazing how quickly it'll just change things up for you sometimes you might get some puddling that's where you just go back in with your brush and you nudge it around a little bit burns and cuts build character yes it does however let's let's not uh, scar children please <laughs> literally it's it's really it's just one of those bizarre little headaches. Not something I uh, anticipated happening, but you just do what you have to do to get through it, right? But I will always be grateful to hear about little kiddos having fun and doing things and wanting to get into crafting. There is that lovely the Miller family talking to you kids. I know your dad watches with you. <laughs> All right, so that is. The Seraphim Sepia on the bandages and on the skin tone. And I just want to, so you can see now how the bandages go from a more pure white to a yellowed look, which is exactly what I wanted to have happen. So I'm going to do it on the hands and the arms as well, and then we'll get into the face area and have that happen too. And I keep forgetting this white is playing with my camera. There we go. Michael Clark. <laughs> You're getting your hellos, aren't you? All right, so here we go. One little arm. And you never know. It's just one of those things where we'll muddle through. We'll get it figured out. But support is always appreciated. Same thing. Just move it around a little bit if it's starting to puddle in certain areas. Get the other arm. This is one of those colors that you don't see too many people using, but I adore having it in my collection. It really does make a difference. I actually like it a lot for if you're painting miniature furniture. It's really quite nice. Yeah, exactly, Mac Attack. That is a hefty price tag. So it's just a matter of doing everything we can now to uh, protect ourselves and make it clear. You know. I'm not Romper Room. I'm not uh, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. <laughs> I mean, hey, if you watch Dawnbringers, you already knew that, but that's not my channel. <laughs> okay, that's the arms done with the Seraphim Sepia. Again, it just gives that yellowing look that I wanted. Now I'm going to use it also on her face. Because that's going to make her look so crusty. Yes, Encino Man. I tapped into Encino Man. I'm also going to put it here. On that little chemise. Chemise. However the heck you want to say that word. Little dabble do ya. Okay, so that's where I'm going to put the Seraphim Sepia. That is the only spot. And now I'm going to switch over to doing, doing the Agrix. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not a kids only channel. This is a 13 and up channel uh, due to, you know, the crafting aspect and sharp objects. <laughs> mm. Fresh out of the crypt, not necessarily. She's just going to get a little bit of a aging with the washes. Stuck your mini on the end of a chopstick with a hot glue. You can um, take a hairdryer, a dungeon matron, 
and it'll help warm up the glue enough so that it releases a little bit better, but don't get strong-handed and force. You'll find, hold it up to a hair dryer long enough and it'll pop itself off. Uh, maybe she's just a heavy smoker. Yuck, 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 yuck. All right, well, I don't wanna lose the vibrancy entirely. That's why I'm actually not using the Nulm because Nulm can really drop things down a few tones as opposed to just a couple, like the Agrex will. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. You zigged, I zagged. So I am gonna switch to a thicker brush for this application. Um, hello, Matthew. Winky face, thumbs up. Cool. Uh, now jumping over to the Agrax, and this is where it's gonna go on the rest of her. I always like to go right for the cloak first because I find that the washes sort of pool more in the fabric. So it's always good to apply it first and you can go back and sort of smooth it out as needed. So we'll start at the top. Get these lovely shoulder pads and then literally work our way down. I mean, you can see it's already starting to pull itself thanks to gravity. <laughs> Hello from France. Uh, let's see here. Aunt Patty. Oh, that lovely. I can't, I'm not going to do it because quite frankly, my voice is already itchy from allergies, but oh my gosh, that's a hysterical thought. She has that gravelly, heavy smoker voice. Too funny. There's a personality for you. <laughs> it's like I can hear it in my head right now. I just can't do it myself because uh, I kind of want to be able to speak. <laughs> but yeah, that is a great idea. I love that. Oh, hold on. Got a little bit too much wash on my brush. So this is where I'm going to encourage it into other areas. Get it also here on the shoulder pads. And I'm not going too ham with the wash. I just want it to get in a little bit here and there. If you want to make this look more dingy and darkened, then definitely Nuln Oil. I just wanted the Agrax to bring it just a little bit down. Not so in your face. My reasoning for using these particular washes. For those of you who are playing the home game. Again, just move it around, tip it around as you see fit. Oh no, that happened at work, Jolene. That's like the uh, person who puts the popcorn in the microwave and they forget about it and like they do something silly, like they don't hit the microwave button for popcorn, they hit the baked potato. I had that happen in college, this one girl, I don't know why, she did it a few times too in the dorm. She would put the bag of popcorn in, instead of hitting the popcorn icon, she kept hitting the baked potato icon. Not like they looked like each other. God, she she caused a couple of uh, dorm evacuations because of that. What a headache that was. Literally, because then the dorm would just smell. Hello, big brother. Yep, that's another color you could definitely put to use if you wanted to. Alright, we're getting there. See, that's what I'm liking is you have these lovely little moth-eaten holes starting up in the cloak, so the wash is great for settling into that. I'm actually not going to move it around too much because I want those to pop out more. But I think we're looking. Yeah, we're looking like that's where I want it to be. Let me just check and see how the back's been going with the rundown. Yeah, a little bit of moving it around here. Just a little bit, not too much. That actually flowed quite nicely today. Oh, the apartment. <laughs> Attention matron, good one. That fresh out of the crypt look. Okay, so the washes are now going to dry. And while that's happening, I'm just going to get that base painted up black. And then we're going to have some unboxing fun. Because why not? Why not have some fun with that? Let me rinse this off. Get that put away. I'm just going to switch to a different brush again. Something a little bit more easily controlled. Here we go. This is, this is one of those Mod Podge brushes that I really do enjoy using. 
So it is the three round. And you can get these at Walmart too, which makes it great. What was that? I dropped my brush. Excuse me, pardon me. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you very much, big brother. Um, but yeah, I was talking with the plaid representative and she and I really were having a great time talking about their paints and miniatures and everything like that. So there's, there's some things in the works that I'm hoping we'll pull together. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for fun stuff, hopefully. All right, just going in with basic black now. This is uh, the Dermacoat black, but quite frankly, any of the plaid craft blacks are quite nice to use. And I tend to do thinner layers, so I might go back and do a second coat um, just to avoid brush stroke issues later on. I was going to say it's like when you paint your nails, but I don't think everyone can refer to that reference. And then what else was I going to mention? Oh, I was just thinking about something I wanted to chat about. Oh, yes, I had done a Hero Forge miniature for a client of mine. He's actually used me a few times now to paint miniatures. And I tweeted it. Well, Hero Forge saw it and they retweeted it, which was pretty darn cool. It was nice to see them liking the end result, especially because it was a custom design on his end. And then he had these very specific ideas for it which I got to incorporate into it. So that was a lot of fun to collaborate with him, bring his ideas to life on the mini. And uh, he was very pleased with it. So of course I'm happy that he's happy. Yeah, I'm gonna do one more coat because you can see this a little bit, but I want her to dry first. So let me tuck over here for now. Uh, does anyone know of a good gloss varnish on miniatures? I do. Oh, but where are you here? I will sing this praise this is a newer product from Mod Podge. You can get it on Amazon, Mod Podge Ultra Gloss. It is a gloss, it is beautiful. You can spray it on, you can actually take off the lid and hand paint it on if you want to, but this is what I use for my miniatures now for sealing them. Uh, the matte is very matte, the gloss is very glossy. I, I love it. So that's my recommendation. I have other ones that I have used in the past. None of them come close to matching that one. And I will stand by that statement because that's my now go-to for glossiness. Um, Hero Forge definitely has a very chill feeling to it, but I agree. Um, so that, Brandon, is my recommendation to you. And of course, I'm sure everyone else will jump in with what they also like to use as well. And that is perfectly fine. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Viper's still on the uh, Selma and Patty. All right. So let me see here. Was that enough chit chat time? Yeah. All right, so one more round of getting the black on this and then and then the fun commences because there's really some awesome stuff in this box in fact my patrons are gonna get to vote soon the month of november got away from me and i realized looking at the schedule there really wasn't gonna be a good way to do a mini vote because of how limited my time is with having the two conventions very close together. Um, I will not be doing Mace next year simply because I'm going to be at Nerdarchy Con instead. It's like a week before that. And that's just a local drive for me as opposed to a take a flight type of situation. And, you know, I already said yes. <laughs> There's that. Um, so I will not be at Mace next year. I will be at Nerdarchy Convention. That's going to be in the Philly area. Heads up for those of you. And a few of the other guild masters are going to be there. We have DM Scotty, we have Wylock, we have Jeremy of, of Black Magic Craft. We're all going to be there for it. So that'll be fun. Hello, Todopotamus. All right, so that gets me the coverage I want. That's why I like doing this in layers. She is currently drawing with her washes. That color shift just does not come through on the webcam. I have tried, I have tried, I have tried. I'm seeing these really cool flashes of gold happening. You're basically just getting a glossy effect. Ooh, 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 ooh right there, right there, right there, that, 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 right there. Except the whole thing is doing it, <laughs> but you're only in that one little spot. Um, so I will do a lovely little spin around video of her once she is dry and ready to go. But Lady Lich is done. What a lich. A lich, I tell you. But yeah, I had fun with the colors on this one. This is one of those things you're going to put her on the table, too, and she's just going to pop right out, which is always fun to do. And you know me. 
I don't tend to stray towards the grays and the browns. I like to give things a little oomph. Okay, let me rinse these brushes and put them away. Um, you can spray the Mod Podge. It's a pump action. It's not an aerosol. So you can spray that in your house. Actually, what I do is I put a big old cardboard box out. I put the miniature in the cardboard box. You do a couple sprays to the side just to clear the pump. And then you go and you spray it. It's very simple, very easy. Or you can take the cap off and you can paint it by hand. Works just as well. Um, all right. So moving things around. So yes, WizKids has sent me wave 10. And oh my God, ever so cool. Ever, ever so cool these away and then I think what I'm gonna try and no I think what I'll do is I'll take them out a little bit of a time mm, let, me, let me slightly raise the camera Wink. Wink. let me fix the camera focus just a little bit here camera two yes that way it'll be easier for you guys to see this I just have to go into my settings for a moment pardon me <laughs> Not technical issues, more like technical reboot, because we're not painting the minis so much as looking at them in their container. Hi, everyone. All right, awesome. So we have that. And then let me just pull back the game ever so slightly, because we're going to be looking at plastic packaging. There we go. Okay. The adjustments you need to make, right? Ah, oh, Miss Greyhawk. <laughs> Um, mod po this is not chunky guys. I have to tell you this is this is a liquid form. It's not the paste And it is a wonderful product. So you're thinking old you're thinking old school Mod Podge. This is new. This is Incredible. It's, it's seriously. I'm gonna sing 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 its praises. It's wonderful um, So no, it's not it's not the paste Mod Podge. It is a liquid Like my tea, okay, so mm -hmm. What should I start with first? I got some elementals. And they are gorgeous! I also tried to arrange them so I could like grab them like all together. Here we go. Okay, so here we have our four elementals that came in. So we have the air, which is tornado! I was like, oh my gosh, this is just too darn cool. So we have this going on. <laughs> Hello, random man things. Mace, Mace was very busy, but a lot of fun. That's probably the fastest way to sum it up. So here we have the air elemental. The earth one. I really like the look of this guy. He just has like this, it's almost like... I don't know why, but I think sumo wrestler because of like the pose. But he's just got this hefty weight to his pose, which for the earth elemental, I think is fantastic. So they're coming out. <laughs> and then... Oh, she's talent portion. Here we have the fire. Which that's going to be a lot of fun. I think these guys, the clear ones, I'm going to play around a lot with washes and glazes instead of doing full paint coats because I want to keep that transparent glow to them. But yeah, these, these elementals I'll definitely do in the future. Um, and then we have the water, which... I mean, look at the motion they caught in this. I'm not surprised, though, because considering the water effects in Cthulhu, the Cthulhu mini, I'm not surprised that this water mini has such a great flow motion to it. I mean, it, it gets this crust of the wave thing going beautifully. So I am very much thrilled about the elementals so those are the elementals i'm gonna run out of desk space but hey gotta share all right so those are the elementals then the other things they sent me were some of the wormlings i got three so let me show you the three that i got so here we have they're just so, and these are actually what i'm going to be using for the uh, kids paint class at pax which is why i wanted to have a moment to show you so here we have the red dragon wormling. Actually has a little breath action going. How cute is that? Comes with a pile of gold and treasure, which I think is fun. You get a little bit of like a side accent piece with them. But the wing details are there, like you get the bones and everything. 
you have these great scale and the claws and everything. Well, you don't need to see the face, but even for like tiny little dragons, these are fun. And again, I thought it'd be great with the kids and everything. Here's the blue dragon, wormling, I should say. Worm, blue dragon wormling. And they come more with sort of a pile of rocks. <laughs> Although you could paint it, it would look like gold nuggets if you wanted to give them a treasure pile. Um, different pose. Uh, they actually have their mouth shut. There's no breath, but I really do like sort of like the fins on the sides going on the head here. Again, more great details. And finally, the black dragon wormling, which it has a really cool pose to it. And I like that it has the same look as the full on dragon, which is behind the curtain. I have this miniature, the black dragon as well. And they come with, I mean, obviously this would have to be a giant but they come with a skull and crossbones. Just something a little bit different there. Um, so yeah, those are the wormlings I received. So I got three of them. The blue, the red, and the black. And then who else do we have here? Um, ooh, the golems. Not golem, but golems. Golem. Mm. Right, right, right. I think it was just the three. Yes, okay. So these are the golems that they got sent, that got sent along. We have a clay golem. And he, he almost reminds me of like the thing, just from the texture and everything. I can already see there's a couple of mold lines I'll have to go back in and fix, but that's easy enough. Um, so yeah, let me get that going on there. That'll be a fun one to paint up to kind of give it that squishy clay look. This one, <laughs> the bone golem. This is like, oh, I wish I had this for the Halloween season. Here's their bone golem. This sucker is nuts. I mean, look at this, I'm trying to like block some of the glare from the plastic. I might, honestly, I'm taking this guy out of the package because stupidly cool details. Hold on. You have to see this. You have to see this because it's just, it's too, too much. It's just amazing. Okay. Here's this bone golem. Look at all these crazy details. You have random rib cages multiple spines just like thrown in for good measure all of these skulls built into it it's, it's disgustingly cool is the best way to describe this guy and i want you to see because i was looking at this guy i'm like oh my god it is entirely gross and grody and you know how i am but look at that it's just oh my goodness this is a really cool one. This is one where it'll be fun to paint. It'll also be fun to use on table. So that's the bone golem. Again, super cool. Super duper cool. I'm just gonna have to tape the box shut. Oh, well, they did a good job with that one. That's that's one of those sculpts where I was like, ooh, caught my attention for sure. Mm, slip under, there we go. And then we have let me put this over here so I'm going to tape them. Then we have the Iron Golem, which actually kind of reminds me of the Iron Giant. Remember that movie as a kid? <laughs> so here's the Iron Golem. Very mechanical looking, all that goodness. Almost, almost like a uh, <laughs> Transformer, which they did send me. I'll, I'll show those later. They sent me like their Transformers and My Little Ponies too, but that's going to be a separate show and tell. So that's the Bone Golem. Again, really cool details. I poke out his eye, DM, which one? <laughs> oh, <God>. Michael. <laughs> yeah, the bone golem is just like, hi. Oh, and then here's a drider. Okay. Look at this underbelly. I get psyched about the details. So we have this amazing drider, and they've done like this really cool thing with the upper torso. Um, it's sort of this almost reverse scales is the best way to describe it. But this is another really impressive piece. You can see they've got the swords in hand. And there's the back. Really cool. Really, really, really cool drider. Probably one of my more favored sculpts that I've seen of driders. Um, oh, that's a good idea. Thanos is a steel golem. I like that. All right, now they've also sent me um, sort of like this city theme type of stuff, which... All things considered, with doing the Zobek stuff, hey, really cool. Let me get this all pulled out. 
I do have to laugh because I've taken a few of the miniatures and I've turned them into statues. Like I took the griffin. So I took the griffin and I just painted it to look like a statue and I gave it a customized base. This was a fun one to do because Zobek, you have the uh, griffin riders. So I wanted to absolutely have a couple of griffin statues. I actually did two. See? And now Cobalt Press will have these two griffin statues to use for their terrain for Zobek, which I'm super excited about. Anyways, getting slightly distracted. So I had to laugh when I was unpacking this and they are starting to send me statues. Um, so here we have a fountain with sort of a Poseidon-esque type of character at the top. Trident and all. Um, it is going to need a little bit of reshaping. As you can see here, it's kind of gone a little wonky. I have a feeling it's just going to be like plunk it into some boiling water and then refit, reshape it a little bit. Um, so that's one thing I did notice. This guy was a little bit lopsided. And then, where's the other one? Here we go. Then they also sent this one, which I actually thought, okay, yeah, I can see how they're saying this is a statue. But that would also be a really killer mini for someone who's a fighter and has a mount. So there's this really cool one. They're calling it a statue as well, and you get the really cool base to put it on top of. But the fact they're two separate pieces, you could very easily switch this around a little bit and make that if you wanted to be a PC type of miniature if you want to go in that direction instead. But the statue base is pretty darn cool. It has that brick-like effect to it. You could even go so far as to put like a little plaque. They have spots there for it. So that is um, another statue bit. Then they sent along, <laughs> kid you not. This had me laughing. It's a guillotine. It is a guillotine here. So it actually, you have the whole blade thing and you have the bucket for catching the head. And I would be morbid enough where I'd probably take one of my old skeleton skulls and kind of try and make it look like a head. Cause you know, <laughs> why not? So there's a guillotine that's coming and it's actually nicely designed. You have the rope detail, you have the blade and all the mechanical pulleys and stuff like that. The wood grain is gorgeous. They did a really good job making that a nice deep wood grain. Um, so that is in there. And then we have just some lamp posts, signs and light. Like I said, I'm cracking up because I've pretty much made a bunch of these <laughs> by hand, but this is coming down the pipeline from WizKids. For those of you who want to just be able to paint the miniatures. So you have sort of like a little post and then you can have, <clears throat> pardon me, the options for your sign and everything like that. So you could do a torch, you can do a lantern, you can do a sign, kind of like what I had going already. But I, it really is funny though, because this is what I made yesterday. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> There's this. I'm, it's funny. I'm, I'm laughing. It is funny. Um, it's just the way things work sometimes. So there's that that's coming along, the horse and hitch, which honestly having, trying to find horses and other animals to scale was tricky for me. So I'm glad to see this is coming down the way. But it's just basic standard setup. Um, it doesn't have any tackle or is it tackle? What is it? Tannery stuff. <laughs> it chops, it slices, it dices. Yes, it does. And now we have a tint and lean to. So that's another fun little design they have going on. And then for those of you with your uh, getting into the dungeon feel of things, there is this hanging cage coming out, which first of all, let's talk about the detail here. Like this is just uh, crazy. Um, the horse looks depressed. Well, it, it looks like it's grazing. If anything, I, I would absolutely put like a tuft of grass in front of it to warrant it's looking down. But yeah, and the cool and interesting thing is there's actually twine, not twine, um, this thicker thread so you can hang the cage so that it'll actually you know, sort of move. Um, horse tack. Thank you. That's what I thought. When I'm saying tackle, I'm thinking fishing. <laughs> uh, so this is another little bit that came along and there's still more people. I'm not even kidding. There's a well, which, you know, I've already made a couple wells, but Hey, if you want to get a quick and easy well, just to paint, not about building it, they have a well. I'm, I'm not even kidding. I'm like, oh, made that, made that. <laughs> and then we have bed rolls, which is fun. And again, it's just like I said, it's just, it's for me, it's funny. Here they have their bounty board. 
And that's where you could take sort of what I did with the signpost and just print out scaled down bits and you can glue them on if you wanted to or paint them by hand. So there's that. Um, I have to... Oh, what is the release date? I looked and I forgot. I will have to double check that and I'll put that, in, put that out as an announcement. And here we have a campfire and a sitting log. So really just a felled log. And I like that you have the, uh, what is that? A rabbit on a spit. I'm not even kidding, that's a wabbit. A bun bun. <laughs> the cage definitely is a cool one. And this I thought was fun. An archery range set up. You even have arrows in the barrels. And your target. So that was a fun concept to see coming along. And then, huh, wood piles. I do have a tutorial on how to do wood piles as well, but... If you need a really quick and fast wood pile, here you go. You could fast forward to the painting section and use my painting techniques for painting this up if you end up getting these miniatures. <laughs> oh God, Viper. Yeah. That's a whole new club. All right, I'm gonna put some of these away because I'm running out of desk space. Mm -mm -mm. Put these to the side because there's actually a lot more. They have a lot more um, PC style miniatures coming out too. Oh, here we have a little bit more of the, uh, the, the city stuff. So there is for NPCs, you have a mayor and a town crier. The mayor's robes are actually freaking gorgeous. He's someone I'm gonna look forward to painting because of the details. And then you also have city guards. You got a guy and you got a gale, which is cool to see. So that's another little bit for the city stuff. <laughs> well, Dungeon Matron, um, I work with WizKids, which is why I do a mini painting stream as well as a terrain stream. Uh, so, like I said, I have a few of these concepts already on the channel if you want to go take a look. Uh, now, they also sent me the Necromancer. Necromancers, I should say. Um, again, you get both the option for a female and a male. And they have some really, like, her spell effect is ridiculously cool. Bye, Mac Attack. Have a great one. <laughs> Where is the kitty going to hide all these? That's a very good question. So Necromancer came along. And then they do have just a lot of these guys going on. So Half Elf, Monk. That's what I have been noticing. There's a lot more of the blended races coming through, um, which is really nice to see. Male Elf Rogue, if you need. So they're expanding their options because I know people have been asking for that. Uh, Human Warlock. We have a half-orc druid, which that I have not seen around. That was a nice surprise to see that option come through. Uh, I have played a half-orc half druid before. I just couldn't find a mini for it. We have a human rogue, different poses. A human paladin. And again, it's a woman. And the human warlock in the lady version. I, this tentacle thing going on in the background, oh my god. <laughs> very, very cool stuff. And, gosh, there's so much here. Here we go. So then we have Human Sorcerer. Again, just sort of different poses and everything. And these are very much the NPC, PC stuff you can put to use. Half Elf Monk. Like I said, Goliath. Like I said, more of the races are coming through, which is nice to see. Um, I love that they brought a Goliath into the mix. Oh, here's another baddie. The succubus and incubus. And I love the wings. The wings have fantastic detail on these. You know how I am. I love wings, I love folds of fabric, and I love scales. <laughs> what else do we have going on here? Another Goliath. And I, this is definitely becoming one that's being used more often by people, which I think is why they're reflecting on creating more of them. An elf cleric. Very cool stuff. Oh, and here we go. The Grung and Kenku. So you have these lovely little frog-like people. They're very cute. Reminds me a lot of their goblins that they have out as well. And then we have the Kenku adventurers. So that was a pleasant surprise to see a Kenku come out as well. And then last, but certainly not least, out of the box. They're not out of its box. We have a pit devil, which is flipping amazing. 
the details on this one. Huh. So this is like the biggest one I got out of the bunch of everything they sent me. It's from the uh, Pathfinder, the Deep Cuts one. But this will be a fun one to uh, eventually get my hands on and paint up because look at that. He's got some really awesome textures going on between the wings and the tail and the horns. He's got almost everything I like. He's got the wings. He's got the scales. <laughs> but yeah, so that's everything that got sent along to me from uh, this is the Wave 10. And let me see if I can figure that out. Hold on. Let me just quickly go and check. <laughs> see if I can figure out when the next wave comes out. Okay, they have Wave 10 coming soon. I'm on their website right now. It's coming soon. So what I'm going to do is I'll email my contact. I thought I had a date, but I guess not. And I'll see if I can get a physical date as to when you can expect all of these. Uh, right now, they have been marked as coming soon. If you go to um, their website, you can see some of the fun stuff as to what's there. But I, I love getting these Wave boxes that they send to me because it's just so much fun to see what they have coming down the pipeline. And then being able to share these with you. So I got to sit down and figure out which set I'm going to present to my patrons. And they can pick which one they want me to paint up. And then there's a few that I just want to get painted myself. Because the details on them are stupidly lovely. Like the Bone Golem. I'm thinking that guy is going to make an appearance in the new year. Just from all the textures and everything. But always and always, always very grateful to WizKids for sending these along. Because it's some cool stuff. And it's well detailed. They're really getting into like giving those little extra touches like you saw with the breath coming out of the one wormling. It's things like that that get me excited as a mini painter, seeing all these little, hi, hello, all those little extras coming through. Um, the design team is doing a great job in my book. Thumbs up. The elementals. The elementals are cool. Ah, there's too many between the golems and the elementals and all this other stuff. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. The drider. Oh, this is going to be a hard one. Actually, this might be good just to throw a whole bunch that I like at my patrons and be like, just pick one for me. Please, just pick one. So that is everything that came in Wave 10 for me in my lovely little surprise when I got home. Yes. And then, um, oh, I just want to show you one last time. I'll show you my fun little. So this is the uh, sign-in question. So I'll just show you. So basically all I did was I put the magnets at the top of the post. I actually had a couple stacked on each other. And then... Uh, all you have to do is put, what I did is I put the magnets on top, of course the shift of the, and it's just click, and there you go. That was the adjustment I made from my concept that's already here on the channel for the switchable signs, instead of having the hook and the eye hook linking together where you kind of like click it on, the magnet just is a quick and easy switch out. And then that way the DMs for Cobalt Press can just go through, oh, you're going to go to the wheat sheaf. And you just put this outside of that tavern that I'm going to be making up for them. And uh, they'll be good to go. So that was just a fun little adjustment. And it worked out really well. I'm quite pleased with it. So I think that's that's everything I wanted to show and tell today. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm assuming sort of like a super glue. They do have goblins. They came out in wave nine, Jolene. And they are absolutely adorable, uh, like alchemists and stuff like that. So they do have goblins. Uh, they've actually got a few things. Check out their Pathfinder is the one to check in their line. Those have really good goblins. I've used their goblins many times. Um, Warforged. I haven't seen too many Warforged come to think of it. Um, you could take that one golem if you wanted to. I'm trying to think of other good sources for Warforged. I could show you the Transformers. <laughs> But anyways, uh, that is it for today. Uh, get yourselves over to the Tabletop Engineer. Say hi to Jim. Say the Muse has sent you. Uh, and it's one of those things where I look forward to seeing you next week. We'll go back to good things on Wednesday, painting another mini. I have no idea what I'm going to be painting yet. We'll find out. We'll see. I might just snag something from the box here and get going on it. Uh, but for everyone, have a lovely weekend. I will talk to you soon. I will see you on the flip side on the socials and take care everyone. Bye.